Bloodborne Review, Defeat Gods, Doll Waifu Simulator by Maxor, The Reprisal. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. If <laughs> It's not untrue, though. Like, it... This is already going to be a good one. I hardly remember this. That in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you. Keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner <laughs> incapable of speech without the use of sign language and stricken with Habsburg disease comes to the... I feel like the British joke is incoming. Ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. <laughs> In doing so, he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great... <laughs> Journeying further, John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60-year-old man he keeps as a pet. And it, it would be the moon uh, presence, right? It, it definitely would be the moon presence. Why does this make sense to me? ...is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth-ridden alleyways of a post-Brexit Britain. <laughs> Slaying monsters, exploring, and tricking women into being impregnated by God so you can consume the child. This is just Souls-isms. Like, playing Souls 1, Souls 3, th this is pretty par for the course when it comes to Souls, to be fair. This game is an excellent realization of a Metroidvania with something new around every corner. I I'm, already, I'm already here and I can hear the comments because I've definitely said that Dark Souls is very uh, likened to a, uh, a a Metroidvania, and I've had dissertations sent to me via via message about how actually that's technically not correct. Not that I'm angry or upset or anything. I just find it incredibly amusing that you know I, I will have a dissertation on on these are all the reasons this is not technically a Metroidvania. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges, and has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch Truth. So, if you can, play it yourself, because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest <laughs> using me as genuine advice. <laughs> I feel the entertainment first thing has absolutely, definitely aged well with the current LTT, uh, Linus Tech Tips, Linus Media Group, LMG, that whole thing going on as of the time of recording this. Oh man, I feel like that aged, that aged like milk. I forgot. Yeah, isn't, didn't she retire? I'm pretty sure she she graduated, actually. I can't remember her name offhand, but I'm 90% sure she's graduated by this time. However, most people can't play this game ever because you have to buy a $400 yeah. magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second. With I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. When I had a PS4 for a brief period of time, I tried playing Bloodborne. I got a headache because of the 30 FPS. Like, it's a good game. I get it. It's not my game because I can't really tank. So because because it, it uh, incentivizes being aggressive, right? Where you lose health and you have that temporary health. If you attack back, you can get that health back. It incentivizes being aggressive and it incentivizes, you know, being faster paced. Whereas something like, you know, Elden Ring or something like Souls 1, you could just be tanky with like stone armor, right? So I acknowledge that the game is good. It might not even be my game by admission. It's a good game. The 30 FPS just kills my brain though it, it makes me it gives me a headache so i have to turn it off after like an hour with no anti-aliasing yeah. want this game to pc i beg of you Please. in fact i can assume that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game but keep watching because i'm hilarious and original do that and i can give you the full unfiltered uncensored unsubstantiated and unsportsmanlike experience <laughs> that is bloodborne <laughs> I feel like unsubstantiated unsubst uh, is a crack at the IGN guide who didn't the IGN like the day one DLC guide. They didn't even finish it or something like that. is what makes this game great and the easiest way to describe it is simple but complicated yeah. on a simple level your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks dodging and hitting and yeah. dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible sounds easy right wrong because no. every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence every they really do if you ever want to feel oh well I'm, I'm definitely overpowered in games go play a souls game because like the rat in Dark Souls 1 right off the bat can just gank you super easy. It, it's a trip. It, it definitely like puts the power perspective just completely out of whack. It, it's amazing. The counter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On yeah. a complicated level, you have a gun, and normally bullets hurt people, but in <laughs> London, bullets are a suggestion, like yeah. the Geneva Convention. Here in England, it's all about the knife bins.
from my understanding, the way that it worked was there's no parry, like in Souls 1, Souls 2, Souls 3. There was no parry. It was the uh, the pew-pew window, saying it for advertiser friendliness, right? The pew-pew window, where you uh, you you pew-pew at them, whether you use your blunder... I think blunderbuss is what I went with, actually, because I wanted that close range just spread. And it, it opens a stun window for you to repost on them, is how I understood the game at, as far as I got. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal yeah. Kombat and rip out their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This <laughs> extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the foot. Yeah. Side note, the most optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting <laughs> Route. See, I changed the webpage. And in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty then entice these two swine dealer bastards to be mauled to death by members of organization 13 yeah. repeat 50 times on a complicated or level every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets yeah so i in regards to the pig route i think there was another more optimal route i think that's the most well known in regards to the trick weapons we're i will forever kind of be a little sad we didn't get any trick weapons with Elden Ring. And I mean, I know that's one of those, well, does it make sense in lore? Does it make sense in universe? You know, did we necessarily need trick weapons? FromSoft could have definitely released a, like, just a DLC, right? You know how they used to release DLCs back in the day in, like, Xbox, th early Xbox 360? We're talking, like, you know, $4.99 for horse armor. It was actually, you know, pretty reasonable. They could have released, like, a $10 DLC that was just weapons, right? Just trick weapons. You know, maybe 20 or so trick weapons, right? And it would have sold like hotcakes. You brought trick weapons to Elden Ring, but it also just probably doesn't fit the design aesthetic they're going with with Elden Ring. So, I mean, I can be sad all I want. It doesn't justify it being, you know, the correct view to have. And transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, punching attacks, 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 On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods yeah. for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry. My favorites are more money, more money, and more money they stack. Finally, yeah. on a meta-theoretical chiropractic level, every <laughs> weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks. And there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon. Like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence there's i mean to be fair i mean we kind of had what was it infused from souls 3 because souls 3 came out after bloodborne i played bloodborne and the little bit that i did play ooh, make it there it's a complex system like there's a whole system there and it changes up how weapons can work entirely i mean yeah you can make your you know plus 10 claymore you can have sharp infusions that way what it scales off of decks alone you could have lightning infusing so it uh, scales off of fate a little bit more but at, at its core while you're branching out to you know different things it still primarily is that same weapon it still is a claymore so it primarily is a bastard sword it is primarily a long sword it is primarily you know uh havel's you know dragon tooth thing right i don't think you can actually infuse that one out i think about it but bloodborne was an experience from what I've played, and I would love it to come to PC, and I would love to actually give it a fair shake. Definitely more, and a lot of strategy and how you level up your character, but I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with nope. all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor, who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, was that Fischl? Fischl's becoming the unofficial how you mascot. Level up your character, but I assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game. But with all this combat prowess, you may be wondering, Maxor. Yep, yeah, that's the one. I don't know what it is. Like, Fischl has just been popping up more and more when I do content and streams, and I don't know what it is. It, it kind of blows my mind that Fischl just keeps showing up. Who are these crusty abominations that you're fighting on screen? Well, to learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So, buckle Body. your britches, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable <laughs> toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with yeah. some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns yeah. out the entire world is ruled and created by a race of elder gods beyond human comprehension called the Great Ones. Figuring this out, they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns out the blood can heal people, which is really good due to all the knife crime. So everyone- This is so aggressively human though. That That is such a thing that humanity does. Like, hey, this, this random thing, let's make a religion out of it. Let's make a cult out of this. I'm not saying anything in particular. All I'm saying is this is a commentary on just humans.
starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals but it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf yeah. so the church hires a guy named german to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the hunters but there's too many beasts so he gives up now the knife crime is increased <laughs> even more and german sort of goes insane and creates a life-size doll of one of his students who is an eight foot tall amazonian he also canonically has sex with it the moon <laughs> god for some reason kind of takes notice of this and is like all right listen i'm building a suicide squad i will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned <laughs> in a dream. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, Gee. but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth sure. dimension. So it isn't is the moon presence, sorry, isn't the moon presence an elder entity where something like Koss is the spawn of these elder gods, these elder entities, right? So Koss is more like demigod status i guess i'm trying to remember what i've heard of bloodborne lore it it's deep you know you can play the game at a surface level and you can kind of piece together things pretty pretty quickly pretty you know reasonably well but this is the deep lore and that's when that's when we just go vadi vadi tell me the lore i don't think vadi, i would love bloodborne to come to pc because it might you know vadi might have some more things to say about bloodborne or you know especially if we can access some of the what was it the dev rooms there was a couple chalice dungeons, I think, that had specific coding things with it that you could like. I think it was like spawn an amygdala in a specific room or something like that. It's wild when you go into the the effect of the iceberg that is the chalice dungeons. In addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to yeah. fill tax legislation. So <laughs> comment your own poorly summarized Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-shills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Yes, you have been jinxed. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In Hell most yeah. video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flattening, and nothing will. They, they kind of are though. I, he's showed it a couple times. Not Rom. It's the uh, the three hunters in one. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember what it is. it's the three. It's the triple boss room in the village. That one can be a skill gate for a lot of people challenge your skill in quite the same way except for the goddamn witches of hemwick who were placed into the game for disability access you can probably tell that i think they're the witches of hemwick i think had a specific didn't they scale up if you had insight there was a gimmick behind that that actually made them either super like easy or made them absolutely just cracked board is a hard game we don't even know if a games journalist can beat it but no. it's hard in a fair way that tests your skills and reaction time except for lawrence but i'll get back to lawrence later what sets this game's bosses apart is that the challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building sized deer demon so yeah i would be <laughs> it was haruka <laughs> There's there's layers to that meme. All, all I'm gonna say is Haruka Caribou, excellent VTuber, part of Ishojo, just awesome, love their content. Now Vicar Amelia was one of those that apparently you're not supposed to hit her as like, like actually fight her until you're like level 40 or something. Well, I mean obviously levels are a suggestion. Vicar Amelia is like one of those that apparently you're supposed to save for like the mid game. I was just assuming because she was right up the stairs that she was an early game boss. Uh, boy, was I wrong pressed if he killed that but she will heal dead, unlike dark full. souls every single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky bone boys yeah. can be knocked over and have their marrow sick and human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference as well <laughs> every boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth unless you're fighting brom who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches we don't mm -hmm. Rom is the best single mother in the game. She she just is the absolute goat. <laughs> Rom is single mother of the year. Talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, let me tell you something. The humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But yeah. Nikolash is I a spooky. psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God yeah. forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. Here <laughs> a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole, poison him repeatedly, and watch him spaz the fuck out until death. You will thank me. But as I actually, what we'll call, we'll call it the London Strat. <laughs> we'll call it the London Strat. I actually did have people comment on, uh, I think people still are commenting on it, the old reaction to this, which I, har I hardly remember going through it. The old reaction people are saying that that's actually a viable way of doing it. I think there's a couple other ways that they mentioned too. So if you're having trouble with Mikolash, 
definitely go check out the old version of this, the comments down there, because there were a lot of really cool and helpful people who actually commented like, hey, this actually works or hey, this doesn't work. Man, I do love my comment section sometimes. The result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering a boss in this game is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that yeah. conquering them is the main reason I play, and their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. But that isn't most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson one in area design, where the fuck am I going? Exploration is the name of the game, except it's called Bloodborne. Only yeah. this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time because the main enemies in this game are british townspeople it's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them the plague of beasts infecting london causes people's teeth to become beast-like makes you aggressive at night and slurs your speech i remember hearing that speech dude dude was just next level on something i don't know what it was but i feel i should stop comment there because i feel this could be t misconstrued as political all i'm commenting on is just the absolute just speech pattern so it's up to you to stop them as a hunter should if you don't look up where to go next in this game good fucking luck people get lost all the time get used to it this game doesn't do exploration like oh look there's loot in this hallway my dopamine's gonna go crazy <laughs> that's baby shit this is daddy's exploration where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 that's hours real? ago and i hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Yeah. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And it, do it does feel like a hub area. From what little I did play, it really, really felt like a hub area. I'm, li I'm like, this is just a hub, right? But if it's classified as a level, man, that's one hell of a level. You start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop -loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything yeah. overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture Hall. And no, <laughs> it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Yeah. Fittingly, the Lecture Hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. <laughs> the game also has two completely secret areas that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And yeah. what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its combat because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing <laughs> currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that From Software hates us all since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. It's but always Ohio. Why is it always Ohio? I can't escape it. It's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle so that... <laughs> Oh, this aged well. Whoa. How long ago did this video come out? Two years ago? Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. She may feel the wrath of the proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince Philip, who guards the way as an Jeez. eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, yeah. all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Yeah. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who Don't only wants to help and assist others. Then don't do take it. a strange path through the forest and into her clinic to discover that she has been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man group. And yeah. if you want, you can take the umbilical cord away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, and femboy fishing. Nice. The scariest of them all. I'm, of course, talking about the DLC, the only DLC for this game. And if you play through Bloodborne, you have to play through the DLC. I'm not giving you a fucking choice. Choice. The so DLC, if Bloodborne goes from like a scale of like one to ten, like the DLC from what I've seen, because I saw other people play it briefly when I when I was in a group that was playing uh, Bloodborne, right? Man, DLC cranks it up to eleven. Like it is, it is savage how fast it goes. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since Spore Galactic Adventures. <laughs> Jung, Come with me on this amazing <laughs> journey to find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old hunters. I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by H.P. Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. <laughs> this DLC has none of that, except the squids. For you Squid, see, yeah. those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented yeah. on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea <laughs> so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the... 
I forget how many VTuber references he peppers this with. I, just seeing Hosho Marin. Oh my god, seeing Sencho was beautiful. The process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters <laughs> to be doomed to a hell upon death, where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity. Indistinguishable from a political subreddit. Yeah. Case in point, this yeah. is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not From my understanding, because Ludwig has what? two phases he has one health bar and then they'll swap phases to a second full health bar right ludwig is one of those that like i've heard he is an absolute just monster to try to overcome because he's bad but because he's too good for you the first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that golden corral is not actually a real corral but like every restaurant except golden corral the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder now oh I'm never not... mind looks like he does have a, a single health bar he just has a crap ton of health okay but yeah no his second phase is rough from what i hear going to lie this dlc has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses i have ever fought in any video yes game they ever. do so your ass will be clenched the entire time and the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning yeah. some people tell me maxor your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh but like this boss you are the one who is truly overcoming <laughs> these challenges and i believe in your ability to beat both of them king boss lightning round the dlc has many such cases of amazing bosses including lady maria who is the basis for germans extremely yeah. creepy eight foot tall doll fetish but we'll get back to that and or technically aren't the winter lanterns like the winter lanterns have some correlation with the doll because they're wearing the exact same clothes i'm trying to remember what it is but the winter lanterns if you look at them are actually they do have the the same outfit as the doll and i thought there was a correlation to the doll itself or at least past versions of the doll there's layers to Bloodborne. Orphan of Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this yeah. is the fight for you. And as with everything that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course <laughs> talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my advice, don't fight Lawrence, you only lose a part of yourself. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always wanted <laughs> my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. <laughs> to wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. It does slap, Holy though. Shit, I'm alive right now. <laughs> Have you ever thought as I... The music really does slap, and it kind of proves the point where presentation can be mid at best or even garbage not saying bloodborne is right but in general presentation can be mid or garbage if the music is done right if the sound is excellent if that sound is if the sound and sound design are on point you realistically you could be watching anything you could be watching stick figures if you had that music behind it right realistically i mean that broad generalization but you get where i'm coming from with that dude that this game is just too good that you would really rather be playing a shittier version of the game yeah. such as the engagement of the chalice dungeons i wonder because i keep seeing the Mimi me cover i wonder if someone sells like you know how they used to have what was it i i remember this from the 360 era where you used to have those holographic covers right the ones where you could take your your, your fingernail and just go on right you know what i'm talking about right where you like move it from side to side and it has you know looking up from one angle has you know like maybe like a modeled uh, uh artwork doing like this but then you like turn it to the side and then it's like this and so you go back and forth you know you know what holographic covers i'm talking about right do we have a holographic cover for me 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 on bloodborne because I, I would drop money on that. I, I don't even have a PS4 or a system that can run Bloodborne. I would drop money on that. I, of course, jest. They're fine, probably, except for half of them, because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon yes, generation for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about how, and more importantly, why. First of all... Why Zero Lenny needs his content? Zero Lenny, in fact, what was it? beat the the fire dog with like uh full fight with the uh, max fire resistance with a torch man is an absolute legend if you haven't seen it zero lenny's chalice dungeon experience bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that are random for my footage i played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pain you witness on screen is mandatory nice. one of the biggest strengths of bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of miyazaki <laughs> but i don't think i have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced but fortunately most enemies you encounter in the chalice dungeons are new to spare Brit 
gives people your wrath, so you instead <laughs> fight SCP-96. But why are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians, who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time, you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally <laughs> wouldn't notice. The Chalice dungeons are so forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls at you, stark naked, wearing only his Nikes. <laughs> the uniqueness also extends to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like two Marian descendant, Watchdog, and the three overweight men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going to have replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog <laughs> fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I think this was the watchdog because I think there's two watchdog fights in the chalice dungeon. No, looking at this health bar, that's probably the one where at that point in the game, you're probably on half health. Because I think at, at a certain point, it'll actually have your health bar. So... Yeah, Watchdog gets really interesting. I'm actually really surprised the Chalice Dungeons haven't come back in any capacity. I don't know if, like, FromSoft has, like, a copyright on it. I could see FromSoft having a... Excuse me. FromSoft having a copyright on it. Didn't EA copyright the ping system from Apex? And there was a... There was a really... Uh, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor, they co uh, copyrighted their Nemesis system. And Breath of the Wild has come uh no excuse me tears of the kingdom has copyrighted mechanics from that as well or at least tried to uh, do certain mechanics so to actually a lot of pushback considering the way of how they're trying to do it however i don't know if fromsoft has copyrighted chalice dungeon generation i'm very surprised we don't see this i'm sure maybe some roguelikes have something similar maybe it's just very interesting that we haven't really seen it come back and we're several years no, we're almost a decade out, aren't we? Because Dark Souls 3 was 2017, so we're looking at, what, 2016, 2015 for Bloodborne? We're, like, nearing a decade after Bloodborne's release, aren't we? He beat Sekiro backwards on a keyboard, and this shit is too fucking much. Now, normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface, and there is a much darker syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture, for they are the save edit dungeons. Whereby... Yeah, these ones. Yeah, I recall this. I think I watched a video on them once, and it was actually very interesting to see how they worked, and... It'd be very interesting to see what PC ports of this game could do with those. Through wizardry, the community are able to conjure up deep, dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets, there are only two that I shall reveal to you, and the first is the Cum Dungeon. Nice. Yes, you heard that correctly and clearly. The Cum Dungeon is the name of the most <laughs> optimal farming route ever conceived by the fucking cricket people who do this shit. Whereby, the player enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high-level boss yeets itself off a cliff. The Murgo's Pig Fisting Route can give you 10,000 echoes. This gives 83,000. Nice. If you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a chalice dungeon. Anything. Yeah, yeah. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers forgot to delete. Yeah. Like this doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the chalice dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passion community yeah now, before we sign off i know i really am very curious what the power of the 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 one where you, the specific save edit dungeon where you could insert anything because i'm wondering if that's going to extend to files of a certain type so therefore you could theoretically export and or dig up files from say souls one souls two souls three even elden ring theoretically and as long as you you know modify it within certain parameters have that file type you could theoretically insert it into there i, I would be very curious to see bloodborne on pc you're thinking max or what about the multiplayer that i would love i i will say though as an addendum to that if we got it on pc i probably just due to modern gaming i probably would not put it past from soft well just companies in general right but i probably wouldn't put it past them to actually remove the chalice dungeons to remove an exploit like that or at least remove the exploit or fix or fix the exploit i don't think it would actually come to pc in that state 
to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC and it better, then I will talk about the multiplayer extensively. And finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about The Hunter's Dream. After all the combat, the battles, and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. Yeah. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity. <laughs> so and his you. doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell oh down and felt nope. defeated, she was there to pick me up. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended to be impressed. <laughs> and she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot Awful. that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, Bingus. and the game is perfect and complete because she is... Bingus, it's all about Floppa. And now they've started a civil war in the comments, you're welcome. In it. Now excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. <laughs> should you get the game? Yes, absolutely. I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters You're and not. demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt <laughs> hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon to learn more. I would also like to thank the kind denizens of the Mythbuster Smut Discord, who nice. sent me half the memes in this video. And as always, thank you for watching. I love that we have a Mythbusters smut Discord, allegedly. That that kind of does it for me, honestly. I kind of love it. It's so good. I, I absolutely love it. Man, that is a, that is a trip, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I absolutely loved this. And if you did as well, definitely go take a look over at Maxor. If you haven't seen Maxor yet, or if you are new to uh, this type of content, I really do recommend that you go and watch Maxor. We have a lot of other VTubers, as you can see, Bow the Whale right here. Bow the Whale reacting to Maxor as well. And uh, leave the Ducks Taku as well. X, just awesome creator, puts out awesome work. And Maxor really can't put out more of these videos without support. So whether that's a sub, whether that's a like, whether that's just watching more of his videos, following this rabbit hole, which down in the, the description, you will see that there will be a link to his channel, his channel link, this video as well, and the, the video link as well. So you'll see all that in the description if that does tickle your fancy. What is your best uh, memories of Bloodborne? What do you like doing in Bloodborne? Do you like things that other, in Bloodborne that other people don't like? You know, uh, the experience of the Chalice Dungeons, any of the uh, randomly generated ones that you find awesome, found funny even, you know, let me know your thoughts in the comments section and uh, I will see you in the next one.